Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Tabo Rachidi, and today I'm going to speak about decentralizing the internet. The current, the current state of the internet is very different from what it was almost 20 years ago. How, was the, how has the internet, internet evolved from there, and where are we heading? Also, does any of this actually matter? Just a disclaimer, although I don't directly speak about cryptocurrency investing and trading, I would like to just state that the information I provide here is not financial advice, investment advice, trading advice, or any kind of advice. Always do your own research on the topics I will discuss and consult the financial advisor before making any investments. So firstly, I will speak about how it all started with Web 1.0, then discuss where we are currently are with Web 2.0. Then I'll move on to the potential transition to Web 3.0, which is currently happening now. I will then speak about the feasibility of Web 3.0 technologies. So Web 1.0, it started around from around the 1990s to 2004. Its main purpose was to serve static pages that were all hyperlinked to one another. There was no interactivity with these static pages as users were only consumers. To create anything on the internet, you would have to know how to code and so there was no easy way for the average person to create contact or voice their opinions on the internet. It essentially was a decentralized collection of state static web pages. Web 1.0 was therefore regarded as the read-only web. Some examples of Web 1.0 pages. On the left is a website which I took a screenshot of, which has a lot of fancy CSS. Next to it is a screenshot I took of Yahoo using the Wayback Machine. The date of this capture is October 20, 22nd, 1996. Now we move on to Web 2.0, which started around 2004 until now. Web pages on the internet were now becoming more dynamic and users were able to interact with the web pages by creating content or leaving comments on the pages. Users were now not only consumers, but contributors to the internet. The internet was not only used to get information, but web pages could also get information from users. This stage of the internet is commonly referred to as the read and write web. Very soon, centralized companies began to emerge and started collecting as much data on the, their users' activities in their respective websites as possible. This had the benefit of tailoring the web pages according to users' preferences so that two people's feeds on Facebook would not be exactly the same. This ensured users would stay on the website and there would be a high retention of users for the companies controlling these websites. Websites like Google and Meta, previously Facebook, took it a step further and could monitor users' activities outside of the website. This was also that they could neatly package the users', users data and sell it to advertising companies. Thus, the age of targeted targeted advertising and lack of privacy had begun. This was a big shift in ownership of content and data as users on the, inter on the internet no longer owned the data they created. So to summarize the issues of Web 2.0, the ownership of data is not in the hands of creators and there's a lack of privacy for users. Web 3.0. This is what Web 3.0 attempts to solve. The concept of Web 3.0 first came up around 2014 when one of the creators of Ethereum, Gavin Wood, coined the term Web 3 in a blog post and envisioned it as an open and decentralized version of the internet. Web 3 is built on blockchain, which is essentially a, de a decentralized network of many peer-to-peer -peer nodes that essentially allows computers to communicate without a middleman. This promises to hand back ownership of data to the creators as there would be no need for a single authority over their data. This stage of the internet is therefore commonly regarded as the read, write, and own web. So the characteristics of a blockchain are that it's decentralized as it is not hosted on a single server and each node or computer connected to the blockchain has a copy of the current state of the blockchain. It is democratic and ideally self-governing as nodes in the blockchain get voting, get voting rights and that it is peer-to-peer -peer as it operates without a middleman 
and all nodes connected communicate directly with each other. Web two, web two skills that still matter. So what does this mean for developers? Well, to get started in web three, three development, I'm sure some people will be glad to know that your web two skills still matter. The front, front end side of web three applications is still built using web two fundamentals such as CSS, JavaScript, and any front end libraries or frameworks like React and Angular. So blockchain technologies are essentially built on top of web technologies. Two, the fundamentals of blockchain. As a Web3 developer, you need to know the fundamentals of blockchain. To be more specific on my previous definition of a blockchain, it works by having all nodes on it running a specific blockchain client. This client is a piece of software that has instructions on how the blockchain works, such as communication and creation of new blocks on the blockchain. In general, a blockchain is a chain of blocks, each linked together using cryptography. Each block in the chain has a cryptographic hash of the previous block, a timestamp of creation and transactions. There are many different types of blockchains, all with their own unique ways of execution. But the most common blockchain used to develop Web3 technologies is Ethereum. This is because it was the first, one of the first to come up with smart contracts, and thus has the biggest community of developers out there. There are essentially two types of blockchain developers, a blockchain core developer and a blockchain app developer. Blockchain core developers create software that runs on the blockchain network, such as the block Bitcoin client. Blockchain app developers build, build applications on top of the blockchain. These applications are called dApps or decentralized applications. This is what the three app development refers to. Smart contracts. A smart contract is a web is a program that lives on the blockchain. There are small programs that can be a few hundred lines of codes to a few thousand. This is how you program the blockchain to, to perform a specific set of instructions. These smart contracts can be agreements and can be automatically executed once the conditions of the agreements are met. So why are smart contracts needed? Well, once they cannot be one, once they cannot be uh, created, they cannot be changed. So they are immutable. This makes them secure as they're impossible to hack after being deployed. This also enables your dApp to have native, native payments available. So you will not need to integrate with any payment services or gateways like PayPal or Stripe. Examples of smart contract use cases are uh, banking, insurance, and copywriting. Some current drawbacks of smart contracts are that one, it's expensive. It costs money to change data and execute smart contracts. This is because each interaction on the Ethereum blockchain is known as a transaction. There are two types of transactions, one that executes a smart contract and a payment transaction. To incentivize miners to add your transaction to the blockchain, you pay a small fee. This is where the expense comes from. Number two, it takes time to to create a block in the blockchain. It takes around 15 seconds to mine or add a transaction onto the blockchain. If you're not careful, you can introduce a bug into, into your smart contract that hackers can take advantage of, such as the DAO hack, when an attacker took advantage of how a smart contract essentially worked to drain more than 3.6 million ether. This is a simple example of a smart contract called Hello World that will store a message when created and can update that message when called, when calling the update function. Number four, you need to learn Solidity as it is the most common programming language used to create smart contracts. The smart contract on the previous slide was written using Solidity. Solidity is not restricted to the Ethereum blockchain and other blockchains such as Avalanche and Polygon use Solidity as well. It has a syntax similar to JavaScript, but is statically typed. There are two main smart contract frameworks to aid in creating a local development environment called Truffle and Hardhat. Firstly, we need a, lo a local blockchain and we can use the built-in Hardhat network or Ganache, which, is a, which, is, which was built by Truffle. Once our smart contract has been deployed onto the local blockchain, we can write tests similar to how you would normally write tests on Node.js using something like Mocha or 
or chai. When we are satisfied, we can deploy our code to a testnet. A testnet is a public blockchain, which is more realistic than a local blockchain. They are separate from the mainnet and can be used safely for deployment. You can then use a blockchain API server such as Infura or Quicknoid to connect your mainnet and deploy your smart contract. On the front end, we now need, we now need our end users to interact with our smart contract. To do this, we need to firstly integrate the blockchain. We can use a library like Web3.js or Ether.js. Then we need to integrate the user's wallets to our, our blockchain. To do this, we can support a, a popular Ethereum wallet called MetaMask. You can write your own code to interact with the wallet or use a library like Wallet, Con wallet Connect. A wallet is what a, a user uses, uses to store their identity on Web3. The user's wallet will contain the Ethereum address, which acts as a username, and also a private key, which is basically like their password. This allows users to be anonymous if they choose not to associate their wallet with their real identity. So although we can see all the activity of the user's address on the blockchain, we will not know their real identity. So the feasibility of Web 3.0. There are inherently many issues surrounding Web 3 technologies. People such as Elon Musk and Jack Dorsey have said that it's a marketing buzzword and that a lot of the technology is hype-based with early adopters being able to cash out. Some critics have pointed out that some blockchains like Solana are not really decentralized as a large majority of the tokens are controlled by the insiders, insiders of the project. And so this may impair the project's ability to become, credibly neutral, to become a credibly neutral public infrastructure. Also issues, issues such as high energy consumption during mining and the high level of scammers and swindlers make it impossible to recover stolen funds. There's also the issue of whether these technologies will scale with user demand. These are some critics I found on the internet uh, where they talk about the flaws of Web3. The first shows an updated timeline of any hacks or scams that have occurred. And the second is a blog post by someone named Steven who makes valid points about the flaws of Web3. So in conclusion, I know that they're currently working on an update in Ethereum to tackle some of these issues. But at the current state, one can make an argument that Web3 is still an abstract concept with little real world foundation. But there's so much money being poured into these Web3 startups that although it has its problems, we may still be hearing about it for a long time.